Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as always, thanks so much for being here. Um, we've got a uh, few special guests on hand here for tonight. Uh, for the first time making his appearance on Line Change is new interim head coach Ryan Michael. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> and as always, uh, we're uh, privileged to bring two player guests on as well. Sitting to Coach Michael's right is Larry Smith and Josh Kuzno. A round of applause for those two gentlemen as well. Um, so for those of you who, uh, for, if it's your first time here, the way we do things is um, I'm just going to ask uh, Coach Michael and uh, the gentleman to his right a couple of questions. i um, going to sort of uh, ask about, you know, some of the things in their personal lives that you might not know, some of the things on the ice. And then um, for my personal favorite part of the show, you guys will own the uh, sort of middle part where you can ask any question you'd like. We've got a crowd mic that uh, we're going to pass around. The only thing that we do ask is that when you have a question, just please make sure that you ask it into the microphone because we want to make sure that uh, every question and comment gets recorded. We're going to post this on our YouTube channel after the show is over. Um, and then to wrap the uh, entire show up, we're just going to sort of take a look into the upcoming week. Uh, we've got Pensacola tomorrow night, and then we host them um, on Saturday for WWE night. So. Um, one thing that uh, I'm going to make a note of is that uh, Coach Michael is in a bit of a rush. He's got to run to the airport after the show's over uh, and drop his, uh, his girlfriend, Kenzie, off. She's going home for the holidays, so uh, we just do ask that uh, you please do be respectful of our time. Um, we're going to try to keep the show as, uh, as brief as possible and uh, make sure that we're getting out of here uh, shortly after 6.30. Um, coach, the first question I wanted to ask you is uh, now that you've been in town, you've been a head coach for exactly one week as of today, uh, what have been some of the biggest things that you've learned in that time? Um, I, think the, I think the biggest thing is just the day-to-day -day, um, practice plan, you know, who's hurt that day, what lines, what do I want to do, um, dealing with, you know, getting calls on call-ups, and especially the urban situation the night before a game, um, and trying to scramble to find somebody to play that weekend. So I think just the biggest thing is you know, the day-to-day. -day. My day is certainly a lot more busy. I'm getting a lot more phone calls uh, than I obviously have in the past. So, I mean, it's been a challenge and, and certainly a grind, but uh, I'm just trying to make the best of it so far. Right. The situation you were in last year as an assistant coach, um, in terms of actually <coughs> constructing the roster and making roster decisions, that wasn't really so much a part of your uh, job description as it is now, now you're the guy. Um, roster decisions fall on you. Um, we've already seen uh, one call-up work pretty well in his debut last weekend uh, in David Palowski, but uh, I guess going forward, how aggressive do you plan to be uh, in the coming weeks in terms of you know, sort of shaping the, the roster for the rest of the season and making some personnel decisions? Um, aggressive as I feel like I have to be, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I'm more of a, a will beat skill kind of a person, and uh, detail oriented, you know, doing little things well, and, and making sure everyone's on the same page. And, I, and for me, it's it, it's your you're all in or you're all out. So um, for the most part, this weekend I thought that was good. And you know, moving forward, that's you know that's my expectation. And if I feel like some people aren't doing it, then you know that's it. So um, you know, moving forward, I just I'm gonna change as many pieces as I feel like I need to until I find the right puzzle that I like to put on the ice. Mm -hmm. And a couple of guys who we know that bring it each and every night are uh, here tonight. Larry Smith, Josh Kuzno. Larry, I'm going to address the first question I have to you. Um, the guys last season, they called you Big Country. Um, has that nickname stuck, and has it continued into this season? Yeah, it's, it's stuck pretty well, actually. Uh, Cameron came up with it. Mm -hmm. Not sure where he got it from, but he uh, came up with it, and it stuck pretty well. So. Still being still being tossed around. So that was never a nickname before. Okay, nope. interesting. Um, last sort of stemming off of that. Last year you missed camo night. Um, you weren't able to suit up due to injury, and it was uh, especially unfortunate because your folks had made the trip into town from Buffalo to watch you play, and you couldn't go. This time around, um, not only did you get to uh, suit up for camo night, but you were sort of the ambassador for that weekend, and you got to kind of be the face of camo weekend. Uh, how special was all that for you? Uh, I, I always loved. I always loved doing that stuff. Anything outdoors or anything camo um, always gets me going, and especially when you can be on the ice in camo. I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, without a doubt. And um, I'm not sure it's a coincidence, but you got your first point of the season 16 seconds into wearing those jerseys. Um, you set up Sean Lynch with a really good keep at the blue line. It was offside. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Um, I went back and watched the goal. I'll be honest. I, <laughs> 
That's the, that was the next question I was going to ask. Yeah, it was, I, I it went was back. Off by it was off by a lot. <laughs> okay, well, I went I back played, and played it off pretty well. Yeah. yeah, you did. I went back and watched it, and it did not look offside. So, um, you know, if, if hockey doesn't work out, then consider being an actor. Yeah, well, you sold it. That's one of the bounces that we needed. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Josh, I'm going to ask the next question I have to you. Um, you, uh, Friday night, got a, a big goal, first one since the home opener. Um, breakaway that kind of sealed the game. Can you just walk us through the play? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I think their guy just, or our guy Rolgi just got out of the penalty box there, and uh, he had some good back pressure, and just I kind of got lucky. Sprung, he sprung me, and just kind of that's my go-to move, I guess. That's my only move, so <laughs> kind of got lucky there and slid it past the goalie. I was gonna say I've been told that uh, it went through the goalie's five hole. That was not your intention. Is that true? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of planned to put it there, okay. but uh, we can go with that. <laughs> So one saying he didn't mean to score that way, and the other saying he did. Interesting so far. Um, Josh, uh, it's your first time going back to, to Pensacola. Um, you played there a long time. You were there for four seasons, uh, won a championship. You were a captain there last year. Um, what's it going to be like for you to go back to that city and this time uh, lace them up for the opposite side? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely going to be a pretty emotional night. Uh pretty uh you know i circled this on the calendar uh i feel like you know got a little unfinished business so you know i kind of want to go in there and just mm -hmm. do what i can to help the boys win definitely and um, <coughs> one question i wanted to ask before we kind of open the floor up is i saw that uh one of your fun facts for the the game programs that we did this year was that you won a ball hockey tournament in prague in 2017 national championship is that right in ball yeah hockey? that's correct can you sort of, uh, I guess, explain what that sport is like? How similar is it to, to ice hockey? Uh, I mean, it's a little bit similar. Obviously, uh, we're on our running shoes, so, you know, no gliding out there. Uh, that's the biggest, I guess, aspect. But, uh, I mean, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's a team game. Uh, it's a little bit uh, like soccer in uh, a way, like, towards uh, moving the ball around and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of like ice hockey. And, uh, yeah. Are there, are there positions? Are there still five? five yeah, on still five or? on five. Okay. Uh, the only uh, difference, I guess, is offside rule. Once you bring the ball inside the blue line, the blue line becomes like the red line. So you have like the whole uh, offensive zone. So Interesting. Yeah. And he, I know that there's some uh, players in this league who played roller hockey and played it professionally and went you know, to the world championships and things like that. Were there yeah. guys in this league who you knew that uh, played ball hockey as well? Uh, not too many, really. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty big up in Ontario um, from my little hometown, so we got a lot of guys from there. But, yeah, not too uh, – I think roller hockey's a little bit bigger. Right. Okay, great. Well, the last question I have for you guys before I let the fans start asking things is um, Saturday night was our first jersey auction of the season. Um, I guess I'm curious because I don't really get the updates up in the press box, but – how did the uh, how did the jerseys sell? How did your guys' jerseys uh, do? Pretty good, pretty sure. I think mine went for like three thirty, I think, or mm -hmm. something like that. So it's yeah, I think uh, mine was similar. <laughs> Great, pretty good, awesome, Larry. I'm sure you would have liked to keep that jersey. I already have one, so <laughs> that's Another true. That one would be nice, but awesome. All right, guys, uh, that's all the questions I have. Um, anything you'd like to ask or uh, comment? The floor is now yours. Again, the only thing we ask is that you please. Uh, Wait until the mic reaches you, and then go ahead and uh, and have at it. So, go ahead. All right. Uh, this first question is uh, for all the guys on stage. Um, so this this will be the first time in the first six or seven weeks of the season that you guys aren't playing back to back games. You know, on this weekend you guys have the game tomorrow, and then uh, the one on Saturday. So how does that sort of change as far as you know um, uh, routine goes for you guys? Mm -hmm. It mixes it up for sure. Having a, a game in the middle of the week, um, it's different. It, for me, it's I think it's a little tougher just because you know there's so many things that you know I see in film or whatnot that I want to you know maybe adjust or talk about, and um, not having ice yesterday and trying to kind of compile a practice today, you know, based on you know prioritizing what things I, I feel are more important, you know, at the same time while getting a good sweat and skill based stuff. So. Um, it's an adjustment for sure because, again, the Wednesday game breaks up our week. And, you know, with 
Thanksgiving Thursday and maybe just to practice Friday to get ready for Saturday. It's just, you know, how do I prioritize, you know, what I feel like is most important? Is it special teams? Is it D zone breakout, neutral zone coverage, things of that nature? So um, at least on my end of it, it's, it's a little bit challenging just because I don't have four days to break things up and I have to decide what's most important right now to fix. Um, uh, honestly, I'd, I kind of treat it the same, almost the same way. Um, I just take care of my body more because we play, we play right, right again on the weekend. So, um, yeah, I honestly just do the same thing, treat my body the same way, and that's about it. Yeah, kind of similar, uh, just quick turnaround. So, yeah, you just want to try to keep your your body in the best shape that you can. And uh, that gives you the best, you know, performance the next night. So, Larry, this is for you. Last year, you were so gentle. You didn't get in the penalty box, but like once. I want to know what's happened to you. <laughs> um, I've tried to. I, I tried to turn it up a little bit. Um, Mike's told me I got to play with a little more of an edge, so that's what I've been trying to do this this year. And. Uh, I try to be like as consistent as possible with my game too, so I try to be as consistent with that um, as well. So that's kind of that's kind of where that came from. <laughs> that's a good question. Well, Coach, how do you think the players have responded just over the past, you know, week and a half, just the changes made and everything? Um, pretty good, I think. It's obviously last week was kind of emotionally tough, and um, you know, a quick turnaround on some things, and having two days to kind of prepare in, in ways that I, I feel like are important. And um, I mean, I, I I'm not like a loud. Um, overcoming voice. I'm 175 pounds and I'm losing weight, so um, I'm not the most intimidating person, obviously, so, you know, my my methods is just more to kind of be stern but not yell um, and be more relatable, and, you know, they've been great and giving me kind of, like, giving me their ear and their respect, and, um, you know, I, I just can't ask for anything more than that. As I'm sure you all know, uh, Sean O'Brien, he's somebody who always uh, comes, you know, full to the brim with questions. He wasn't able to make it this week. Um, so, as always, when he can't make it, he texts me some of his questions. Um, so, <laughs> uh, one of them is for Coach Michael. Uh, Coach, he wanted to know, um, with only four defensemen able to dress for Saturday's game, the forward was shifted to play defense. Um, how does having 5D and nine forwards change the way the lines are rotated? I mean, it makes it interesting for sure. Uh, preferably not be in that situation if possible with the roster, but you know, it was a great opportunity for Urban, and um, you know, certainly I'm never going to stand in the way of those things. So, um, I, I told these guys, you know, going into the week and into the last weekend, that you know, obviously I've got lines, and starting out the game, the guys are going to go with the same guys, and the way I look at it is, you know. And for the most part, Saturday, I, I felt like I, there was a lot of changes in lines, and maybe that's good or bad. But you know, I'm just gonna if guys are playing well or you know working harder that night, they're gonna go out again, and kind of that's my my mindset going forward is you know to reward guys for playing well and the guys that aren't you know doing the things that we need or not helping us win are, are gonna play less. So um, that's that's my mindset with it. And he wanted to follow up with that. I already asked you this, but uh, for some of the folks who might not know what the reasoning in behind this decision was, why why put Cameron out of uh, all your available forwards? Why why put him on defense? Which, by the way, it seemed like he he played pretty well back there, so it seemed like it was probably a pretty good decision. Um, he actually wanted to. Part of it was, um, you know, I he's a guy that will do anything that's asked of him. He's a, he's a team player and uh, just wants to help us win and. Um, 
I think at times last year even I might have put him back there at a few shifts. So mm. it's not, you know, alien to him. And um, while I will say his backward skating is probably not elite, um, you know, he does a good job of angling and, and doing the little things well to not get beat. And, you know, watching the film from Saturday, just because I'm, I'm so consumed during the game with watching 100 different things, uh, I thought he did a, a pretty good job. So. Yeah. Well, when he was at uh, RIT, he mostly played left wing. And then he came here. And uh, Leo and Coach Michael, they sort of uh, you know, helped him transition to play center. And now he's playing defense as well. So kind of a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> I noticed there was some confusion uh, about Renee Hunter's current situation. Would you be, would you, uh, would you um, clarify uh, his status, or any of you guys? Yeah, I mean, I, he just felt the need that he wanted to kind of go home and, and be home for a bit, and um, you know, as it stands right now, that's kind of you know where it still is, and you know, I have his number, and he knows that ever wants to get in touch if, if it's hockey related or not he's more than welcome to and we'll kind of go from there but you know at the moment it's status quo with that this question is for josh um josh i know your parents were here this past weekend so how did it feel knowing they were sitting up in the stands when you scored that goal yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely awesome when uh, your family's in town. Uh, you know, they, they get down as, as much as they can to uh, support me. So, yeah, it's always, it's always nice uh, when they're there, and especially uh, happened to get a goal that night. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Okay. I enjoy music questions. So, what song has everybody been listening to this week? All four of you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't either. I, I feel like What's stuck I in your head? I feel like I haven't been listening to the radio just because my phone's been going off now for this position every <laughs> minute and a half. Uh, I, I like country. Um, yeah. Zach Brown Band. Uh, Rascal Flats is, is more my area, so anything anything with that. Yeah, the country, uh, the country, radio, country radio usually stays on in my car, so I don't really change it often, so it's usually whatever's on there usually is what I'm listening to. Yeah, I'm a country guy, too. <laughs> uh, country and 90s rock. Say, if it's Friday after 5 and you're not listening to Up Down, you have messed up. <laughs> Do we have any hip-hop guys in the locker room? I know we have some. EDM, yeah. What's that? The metalhead. That was Minerva. He's not here anymore. <laughs> okay. I have a question then, since I have the microphone. For Larry and Josh, um, by the way, Josh, thank you for the fight on Saturday because apparently they've stopped people walking through and we could get to our seats. That was awesome. But how do you decide, like, which fights you're actually going to get into versus the ones you're going to, like, walk away from? kind of all like situational I guess um, for me at least if I think I'm going to get punched first and I'm going to drop my stuff and start <laughs> punching first um, and it's all like I we could have probably a few times could have fought Saturday but since we were so like short staffed we're trying to stay away from all that kind of nonsense and staying out of the box as best as we could so yeah it's all like situational and depending on the line line up and how many guys you got and if you can spare but that's about it uh yeah i'm not much of a fighter but uh, uh i guess yeah like larry said uh situational uh the guy happened to be in my way when i was going for a change so <laughs> i uh had to do something about it i guess yeah Well, also follow up, Coach Michael. How do you do? You prefer like any particular times that they you would wish they would have laid off a fight, or you wish they would have gone into one when they didn't? On Friday night. Yeah, I mean, 
I play I played in the league when when Cozy was in Pensacola, and I think he he can attest to the fact that you know that was certainly not my in my bag of tricks was fighting. Um, so I guess behind I mean I'm I'm all for it in situations where you know if somebody gets cheap shotted or somebody's you know taking advantage of a smaller guy like I'm all for that, and and I think it's just like uh, Larry said it's situational. Um, obviously. Saturday being short staff, that's at night where when I'm already playing 5D, but one of them's a converted forward and we lose another D that puts everybody in a tougher spot. So that's, I think it's just picking your spots with it and, you know, sending the message when you need to or responding to a message, you know, when you need to. Speaking of fights, why was Marcus thrown out? Um, I didn't see it. I, to be honest, I think it happened fast, but he, he got a penalty and then um, was talking to the ref maybe a little bit too much and um, got a, a misconduct. And because there was – it was a 10-minute, so because there was eight minutes left in the, in the period, there's no sense in him being in the box because obviously he's going to be there the rest of the period, so they just send him off. Sean asks Larry, as a big outdoors guy, what do you typically hunt? Do you have any spots here in Georgia you go hunting or fishing? Um, not yet. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a few um, fans asking if Larry can take me, so I'll probably take them up on that. But mm -hmm. uh, back at home, I don't know, I like hunting uh, deer, uh, turkey, and bear pretty much. It's the main three things that we have there, really. So, so all three of those is, makes for a longer season, too. So that's always fun. I just right. like being out there. Do you have any good uh, hunting stories you can share? Uh, <laughs> if you need to think about it, we can let you think about it for a bit. Um, I guess one right before I came here, uh, a couple days before, I sat out in the pouring rain for about seven hours. And uh, finally, right before um, the sun goes down, a deer came walking down like the driveway at my cabin. And it kind of went into the bushes. And I pulled back with my bow, and it ended up laying down. So I kind of panicked and didn't know what to do. So it was about to go to sleep. So I kind of just put the pin on its chest and threw the arrow and got her. So wow. got a nice doe from like 40 yards away when I was laying down. So it was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. That was all in the pouring rain. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So like a movie scene. Uh, he's got a question for Josh as well. Um, I think uh, I sort of asked you a similar question, Josh, but he asks, uh, does having teammates from previous seasons like uh, Ryan Devine and Danny Caesar from Knoxville, um, does that make transitioning to a new team uh, with a very different style than Pensacola's uh, any easier for you, knowing that you've got guys from previous teams that you've been teammates with in the past? Uh, yeah, I think definitely uh, helps a little bit. Uh, you know, just knowing someone, they can show you around, you know, town or you know the, the locker room or anything like that so yeah it definitely helps uh having a hand and knowing a knowing a little bit of the inside scoop definitely all right guys anything else So this is for each of you up there. Since you're away from home for the holidays, is there anything specific like a tradition for Thanksgiving that you're going to miss? Definitely the turkey. Definitely the turkey dinner. Yeah. Um, a bunch of the apartments are getting together and uh, with the girlfriends and stuff and making turkey dinner and all the sides and all that good stuff. So we'll be doing that Thursday as a team, most of us at least. Yeah, I think just, uh, you know, family and stuff. Uh, it's always good to get back with your family and, you know, celebrate and have a good meal. But, uh, no, it's good. Uh, we get our hockey family, so that's all that matters. Uh, yeah, for me, it's family. Just we're always at my, my mother's parents' house. And uh, this league's kind of tough just 
every year I've been down here, whether I was playing or you know on the staff, I, I haven't been able to kind of get home for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So um, it's obviously tough, but you, know, you just kind of you know rely on like they said your, your hockey family here and, and you know the support we have here. So. I've been really lucky uh, since I started doing this. It's my fifth year, and every year so far, um, my mom's always been able to make it down for at least a few days. Uh, she's coming again. Uh, Mike's has actually uh, been kind enough to pick her up from the airport. <laughs> he's going up there anyways tonight, so he's going to pick her up and, along with my brother and bring him back down. So I'm going to have the, uh, the chance to see them for a few days this week, which will be awesome. <clears throat> This goes to country. If you need a good fishing spot, talk to Ryan. He knows of a decent one. It's quiet, out of the way. Nobody bothers you. <laughs> Appreciate the questions, guys. Anyone else? All right, um, we're going to move on to the last part of the show. Just going to sort of preview the upcoming week we have coming up. Again, the team's heading down to Pensacola, uh, play 8 a.m. sharp tomorrow morning. So first thing tomorrow, um, they're going to play down there and then come back uh, the next day. And we're hosting the same team, Pensacola, uh, on Saturday night at the Macon Centerplex. Um, so, Coach, I wanted to ask you about uh, playing in that building because it's our first time playing them this season. Um, and <clears throat> that barn, the hangar, it's, it's always been a really tough building to play in. Um, last year we went there four times. Um, we only scored twice in four games, so it seems like it's just always really, you know, strong defensive games. Um, have you had a chance? I'm sure you've uh, watched some film on that team. Do they look sort of similar in that regard? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's a, it's a good place to play when <clears throat> you're playing for Pensacola, but um, they fill it out well, and it's humid, and um, it's always a tough place to play, the environment in general, and then just coupled with, you know, the style of play they have. Um, you know, they're, they're quick up front, and, um, and generally they play fast. And that goes kind of more so into the D zone. They they kind of rely on winning one-on-ones in their end, and, you know, they challenge you. So, um, you know, it's I think it's more of the same if you look at, you know, their goals for and goals against relative to where they are in the standings. Um, they're not going to score a bunch on you usually, but they're going to make sure it's tough for you to score. So yeah, it'll be the same as it's been for sure. Yeah, and um, the team may be looking a little bit less shorthanded than it was uh, last week, at least we're hoping. Um, a couple of nagging injuries to two players up front in particular, Danny Caesar and Sean Lynch. Um, can you, I guess, shed any light on, on their status heading into tomorrow night's game? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're both they're both fine. Sean had a, uh, an x-ray. And everything's good there, so I think it's just a little sore and uh, similar to Caesar, the lower body thing, just a little banged up, just starting to kind of get into the grind of the year, and, you know, mm -hmm. these things kind of happen. So, uh, you know, I rely on both of them, so I'm going to continue to do that until, you know, until I can. So. All right, Coach. Well, uh, congratulations again um, and on your first win with the Making Mayhem as the head coach. Um, appreciate you being here for your first time. Uh, Larry, Josh. Uh, appreciate you guys being here as well. It's been a lot of fun. Safe travels tomorrow, and uh, go get two points. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last question I have for you guys, as always, is going to be a trivia question. Uh, and the question is this. Kenzie, you're exempt from this question because it's an unfair advantage. <laughs> Ryan Michael has worn two numbers throughout his career as a player for the Macon Mayhem. Name those two numbers. Nobody's going to get this. <laughs> Does Kenzie know this one? People are trying to bribe the answer out of her. <laughs> Got to name both of them. I don't know if I mentioned whoever gets it uh, wins a free autographed puck from from uh, Josh and Larry. You're close. <laughs> Getting colder. Okay, uh, yeah, both player, both numbers are worn by current players on the team. Is that a good enough hint? Yeah, well, you know, they got one. Yeah, you got one of them. Yeah. No. 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 Are you no. really just going to go 15 and 21? No. Bill, Bill, you were extremely I'm, I'm kind close. of insulted, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bill, switch one of those numbers around. 
three. Not a boy. That was too good of a hint, but congratulations. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, again, the team plays tomorrow in Pensacola, 6.35 p.m., uh, I believe, local time, so that's 7.35 p.m. our time. If you want to catch the game on SPHL Live, and then uh, the team comes back. We'll have uh, Thanksgiving off, Black Friday off, and we will host Pensacola this Saturday night at the Macon Centerplex. Hope to see you all there. Uh, in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed your meals. And, again, thanks, as always, for coming to our sixth episode of Season 2 of Line Change. We'll see you guys next week.